This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. We turn to Morocco, where authorities have arrested the award-winning journalist, human rights activist Omar Radi, on what press freedom advocates are calling retaliatory charges. Omar Radi reported on the role of Moroccan state and big business in dispossessing farmers of their tribal lands. He's spoken out about facing harassment and surveillance. He was arrested on Wednesday, July 29th, just over one month after he was the focus of an Amnesty International report that alleged Moroccan authorities hacked Radi's phone using Pegasus spyware from the Israeli company NSO Group. Now a court has charged him with undermining state security by receiving foreign funding and collaborating with foreign intelligence. The court also just charged him with rape. The Committee to Protect Journalists issued a statement that, quote, Moroccan authorities in the past have plainly tried to make any charge against him stick in retaliation for his work as a journalist. CPJ called on them to release Roddy and investigate any sexual assault charges in a credible and transparent manner, unquote. Omar Radi's lawyers deny all the charges against him. He's reportedly being held in a prison in Casablanca that's a COVID hotspot and has not been allowed any visitors, not even his lawyer or his parents. His next court hearing is scheduled for September 22nd. I spoke with Omar Radi before his arrest and the latest charges on July 16th, when he was being taken in several times a week for questioning and asked him to explain what was happening. First, I um, it, sto it all started by 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 a media harassment by pro state media that um, uh, started leaking my private information and also saying fake news about me and insulting me, my family, my colleagues, and my friends uh, with a lot of fake news, but also with a real news, uh, my bank information, for example, that only uh, state officials can access uh, to to them. So uh, this um, this harassment campaign accused me of being uh, working, of having worked for um, uh, intelligence agencies. Um, especially uh, U.S. and uh, British uh, intelligence agencies. And uh, surprise, the June 22, uh, June 22nd, uh, Amnesty International released its report about me being spied on by Moroccan authorities using the Pegasus uh, virus. 23, the next day, the prosecutor, the general prosecutor of Casablanca, ordered the National Brigade of Judicial Police to investigate with me on the basis of the same information that has been leaked on this um, uh, on this uh, pro-state media about me uh, being uh, having been a spy for uh, for uh, I don't know what country. So uh, 24, I got the police summons, and 25, I had, I had my first hearing by the national, the, the political police in Morocco, and it continued. And now uh, I'm, I'm one, one out of two days um, I, at their offices answering uh, ridiculous and um, surrealistic questions, such as, you have met with. Uh, with uh, the spokesperson or a diplomat from the Dutch embassy, what kind of intelligence and inf services were you providing him? And uh, without any evidence, um, uh, they don't face me with any evidence. They just ask me questions like that, that are um, empty questions. And they uh, want me to uh, confess something I didn't know. And uh, now it's it looks like harassment, and everybody in Morocco knows it is a judicial har harassment for what happened with uh, Amnesty. So let me step back for a moment. Omar, can you talk about your work as a journalist, the kind of stories that you do? Yeah, uh, this year uh, I worked a lot on land dispossession uh, because uh, in Morocco uh, we have. Um, collective land ownership uh, and the tribal lands are very, um, very, very, very large in Morocco. And um, the state is trying to get these lands and to inject them into the market. Uh, and, and there is a lot of injustice in these policies because uh, people are not compensated uh, well. And uh, these uh, lands are revaluated re re uh, very highly. And um, it's all benefits to the big capital in Morocco, actually. So I work on land grabbing, land dispossessions. I also work on um, the finance sectors and um, and the relationship between the power and business in Morocco. 
Um, that's that's the, my framework, and also human rights. And so then explain what this Pegasus program is, how you believe—I mean, the government in Morocco has access to your bank accounts and um, other information, but what happened to your phone? Um, Pegasus is quite— silent program you don't you don't feel it actually and it's not a persistent program it doesn't stay in your phone or in your computer uh, it works uh, using um, a network injection so people need to be uh, near you uh, to in, to uh, um, make themselves pass as a, as a relay antenna and your phone is connected to a fake relay relay antenna um, and then the uh, network injection works, and then the program works, and they get—I uh, don't know—he has a lot of features. He can use your microphone, he can use your keyboard, he can use your screen, um, and uh, get any information that is uh, sto stored in your phone. In your phone, so I don't know uh, what the amount of information they they stolen from my phone, uh, but I'm sure uh, in this pro media pro state medias, uh, they published many information that I have exchanged even in Signal, which is uh, known that um, that is a very safe program. So um, I have evidence that that my own uh, co conversations have been leaked to uh, pro-state media, the same that are leaking also my bank information. And can you talk about what happened um, specifically when the amnesty report came out, the significance of what they said, it very much focused on your case, and then what the Moroccan government said to you when they started calling you in for these interrogations, and what have you been charged with? Um, I, in, in the police, they don't talk about the amnesty report. Um, they, the government said uh, in a public statement, an official statement, the head of the dip Moroccan diplomacy said that I have been used uh, as a pawn by uh, Amnesty International uh, to harass uh, Morocco, uh, that is a democracy, and uh, that I myself I have ties with an um, agent, li liaison agent uh, from um, another country. Uh, and this was really serious because it's the government in person who is uh, threatening me and, uh, and accusing me of all this while I'm just, I, 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 I just, I've, I, I, I was the victim here and I was the, 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 the person who has been a, uh, spied on. Um, I, uh, the least I wanted from the government is to uh, to launch an investigation about what's what was happening, and I was even okay to give them my phone to uh, to audit it. But I have been the, the next day I have been attacked and aggressed and um, and accused of treason and uh, many other insults uh, that uh, tr tried to discredit me with the public opinion. Omar, uh, if you're charged with treason, could you face the death penalty in Morocco? Uh, the uh, criminal code articles, yeah, the, it's it's large, and I, I I don't know. I think I, th I think they have no evidence against me, and and this is an empty case. But uh, if they want to charge me, I can go from one year, five year, to uh, of prison to death penalty. But I think it's unlikely. This is a uh, this is not really serious uh, because um, um, I, I can. They cannot. The state they cannot consider that I'm an, an individual. I'm in a war against all the institutions. I'm not in a confrontation with the state. I'm an individual that needs to uh, do his journalism uh, in in, uh, in 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 a safe way and people let me do it in peace and also to let me uh, express myself as I as I want to I don't, I'm, I'm not in a war against anybody and the state thinks that I'm tr I'm, I'm going in a war this is surrealistic and uh, uh yeah, I don't Are know. you worried about the people around you, closest to you? Can you talk about who they are attacking and revealing who are your friends, your colleagues, who you live with? Yeah, the very last surprise, for example, was that my f father's phone calls have been transcripted in this pro-state thug medias. 
Uh, Wait a second. So your even father, my father has been. Transcripts of your father's conversations are printed in the Moroccan calls. media? Yeah. Yeah. So now even my father is uh, uh, is phone taped. So this is uh, this is this is crazy. This is taking proportions that are uh, incredible. So let's talk about when all of this happened. Um, the Amnesty report says forensic artifacts that Amnesty International extracted from your phone suggest that the Pegasus network injection attacks occurred on January 27th, the February 11th, and the 13th of September 2019. Yeah. Yeah, this is what they found, because the, the virus um, make the, makes disappear uh, the, uh, its fingerprints, so it's hard to find all the, um, the, um, the uh, traces of this, of the, of the, 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 the the active virus, actually. Now, we spoke to you in March, uh, shortly after um, we first spoke with you. You were given a suspended four-month uh, prison term for a tweet that you put out in 2019 about the jailing of a group of activists. What were you tweeting about? Um, there, there were uh, there were this um, this strong social movement in the north of Morocco, the Hirak of the Reef, and its leaders were asking for hospitals, um, jobs, job opportunities, and uh, public services, and they ended up um, jailed. Some of them for 20 years uh, of jail, of uh, being accused, like I'm um, uh, accused now, of jeopardizing national security. And I tweeted about this judge, and I said, uh, we'll, "We will never remember, we will never forget uh, about all these people uh, with uh, no dignity." And um, I have been uh, accused of outrage to a judge, and sentenced to four uh, months suspended. And um, I went to the appeals. I'm still waiting for the appeals date. Do you assume you are always being surveilled, Omar? Yeah, um, I, I have evidence about that, actually, because um, uh, the police showed me that I was—they uh, they were surveilling my phones and my calls and my SMS messages since 2011. The investigation with the police went back until 2011. So they knew uh, who I was talking to, who was te texting, who was texting me, who was calling me, etc. cetera. Um, it's not um, a speculation. It's not a sup supposition. I am now sure that the, I have been um, surveilled <clears throat> by the state. Um, and uh, the state in Morocco has a good track record of acquiring this kind of tools. Hacking team, uh, Finn Fisher, BAE Systems, Morocco is a customer, and Balt, and we have the, the proofs and the evidence that Morocco have paid more than $3 million, for example, to Hacking team, uh, the Italian company, for, his, for its um, virus remote control system, RCS. Omar Radi, how is the Moroccan <clears throat> media covering what's happening to you? What are other journalists saying? Is uh, civil society rallying around you? Yeah, uh, civil society is rallying around me, and uh, the, I think the public opinion is 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 very very um, uh, um, uh, showed a lot of solidarity as well as the uh, Moroccans living abroad and many other NGOs in uh, in the inter international level. Um, Media's also are yeah precautiously covering the facts um, of what's happening and waiting to see the next steps. Uh, I accept the pro-state media and um, what I call the thugs uh, that were that as working as a journalist for the state, that are um, or they already sentenced me. They already called me the the this spy, the the traitor, uh, it's it's etc. Uh, those those media are in their role. I think they just were functioning as as, as state thugs. Do you think that the Moroccan government is using you, Omar Radi, as an example, a warning to other journalists not to do the kind of corporate and state investigations that you do? I think um, I think what we've done with many other journalists in the past uh, is 
um, has upset the state and the state in the, his strategy towards the media um, decided not to not to make this happen again and not to make it repeat again and not to make this kind of journalism exist uh, so yes i think um, i think um, that that the it's also it's it's a revenge actually and it's a very fast reaction after the amnesty report um, but also uh, it has this function to make people afraid uh, by this kind of courage of this kind of journalism this kind of um, uh, people who speak out uh, and who call uh, to uh, to uh, uh, call out against injustice etc i think this is Consider it as dangerous by the state. The first amnesty report um, showed uh, examples of this Pegasus software injected into other journalists' phones, documenting, surveilling, spying on everything they were doing. What advice do you have to working journalists? Yeah, we, we, we cannot we cannot have the means of states and huge companies, huge defense cyber defense companies. I think uh, the the best thing to do is to get a lot of precautions, not to use the phone if it's not necessary. If we can do the things physically, etc. Um, protecting sources as journalists is very um, very important uh, because uh, on one of the purposes of the. Um, surveillance is to access, to map your network um, and uh, using uh, the, the latest security software and um, anonymity uh, connect connections. Uh, I think this is very, very important. And Omar, does it make sources afraid to talk to you? You are a targeted journalist. Has anything happened to people you spoke to for your stories? I didn't try to call them yet because I'm always uh, in the police offices. I need to go back to my work, so I, I hope to to see what what's happening um, after all this nightmare is over. We are speaking to you right before your sixth interrogation tomorrow. Are you concerned at any point, like tomorrow, you could be taken and not released? Everything is possible, actually. Um, I, it's not excluded. But uh, if they if they arrest me, they have to show um, material evidence, which they don't have. So uh, it would be an abusive arrest. And uh, my lawyers are are aware of all that. And I I gave all all evidence and all the proofs of my innocence to my lawyers and all my partners to journalists, etc. So I'm not afraid. I'll go there. Um, I, I stopped answering their questions and I stopped signing their reports since yesterday. Um, and I'm not doing it again. So I stopped cooperating with the police because they're asking um, empty questions and uh, questions that d don't respect the pre presumption of innocence. Uh, so I'm not playing this game. If they have something, they just arrest me and send me to the prosecutor and then to the, to trial. Uh, but I'm not playing this Q&A game with the police that just want me to confess that I, I, I was something I, I never was. Uh, so I took this very hard decision, um, not keeping silent and not signing any uh, any testimonies or confessions. You said you've made this decision to keep silent? Yes, yes. I'm not cooperating with the Moroccan police. Award-winning journalist and human rights activist Omar Radi speaking to us from Casablanca, Morocco, July 16th. Two weeks later, on July 29th, last Wednesday, Moroccan authorities arrested him. He's reportedly being held in a Casablanca prison that's a COVID hotspot and has not been allowed to have visits from his lawyer or his parents. We'll link to the Amnesty International report that alleges Moroccan authorities hacked Roddy's phone using Pegasus spyware from the Israeli company NSO Group. And that does it for our show. I'm Amy Goodman. This is Democracy Now! Stay safe. Save lives, wear a mask.